ago. And um, I, a while ago, I can't remember how long exactly, but I was reading in uh, Ruckman's reference Bible one day and I saw this and I was, as I was reading at the top, like if you're reading through the verses, but then he'll have like maybe where it separates uh, like that chapter or that whatever, and it puts like a headline on there. Well, it said, put, putting on the new man. So as I was reading down through, I didn't, I really didn't see the putting on the new man. I did read it, but that really didn't click. But then as I read and I saw put on in the chapter and I was like, hmm, that's, you know, what, what things could we put on? We put other things on in our life. We put on our clothes or, um, you know, a hat or something like that to cover us, but never really considered, you know, what are some things that maybe God would have us to put on uh, from him. So uh, we'll start here first. Um, but the, there's, there's four things that I'm going to go through, four points. And um, the first one's going to be the new man, put on the new man. So we're going to start in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and uh, we'll start at uh, verse 23. Ephesians 4, uh, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the heroes unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. And uh, let all bitterness, wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So with all these things in the let all bitterness, wrath and anger and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So those are some things that we want to put away on, but we want to put on a new man, which is uh, our spiritual man uh, being born again. Uh, the, uh, the, the scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, um, yeah, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things have become new. So we put on that new man. And we'll go over, we'll look over here at Colossians 2, something about putting on the new man. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, we'll start in, uh, we'll start in, um, we'll start in verse 8. As it was saying over there in, in Ephesians um, about putting off wrath and malice, we'll start up here in uh, Colossians, uh, verse 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filth, communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man. So the old man was 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 done away with you put off that old man with his deeds and have put on the new man so that your salvation which is renewed in knowledge after the image him that created him where there is neither greek nor jew circumcision or uncircumcision barbarians scythian bond or free but christ is all and in all put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So anybody, it doesn't matter. Anybody can put on the new man, the Greek or Jew. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be Muslim. You know, it doesn't matter what religion you were before. It doesn't matter who you are, Asian, um, whatever you may be, people in Africa, people in South America, anybody. Barbarian, Scythian, bond or free. So even servants or whatever, anybody can accept Christ and they can put them on. So with putting on the new man, there are some things that God gives us so that we're able to, to I guess, um, shield uh, the new man. So God gives us armor that we're able to put on. So we'll go to the next point here. We'll start with that. We'll go the armor of God. So we'll go back uh, to Ephesians here. We'll go in chapter six, Ephesians six. We'll start. Uh, Ephesians 6, and uh, start at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that you may put on, 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So the devil's always throwing stuff at us. You know, you, you're going down one day and you're just having a good time, maybe driving on a road. And, you know, the Lord just or the, the devil just pops something in your mind. And it's just like, man, where'd that come out of? You know what I mean? And then you start thinking about other things and you kind of get off on a rabbit track. And then that's so the devil throw things at you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So God gives you armor. Okay, put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This is where that shield, to, to be able to, all the wiles of the devil, what he throws at you, put up the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to stand to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the Lord gives you something to fight with. Uh, he gives you a sword, which the Bible is, is, is your sword, and it's the word of God. And the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the Lord gives you the Bible. You, this is something you can fight with. We don't, you know, you don't fight physically. You know, you fight them spiritually. That's what you're fighting with. You're fighting spiritual, spiritual battles. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Also to add to this, uh, the Bible does say, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Uh, so prayer and supplication, everything with thanksgiving. And then, uh, so after we have done, put on the new man, we've had the armor of God. So once we have the armor of God, so we'll go to our, the next point here. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll start there. So uh, Romans 13, we'll go to Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. <clears throat> Romans 13. And Christ, it's like putting on clothes. Um, it, you know, you per, you want to protect the vessel. Uh, you don't want to walk around naked. That wouldn't. That's not a good thing. So the Lord gives us, like with the armor, He gives us stuff to clothe ourselves with. But think as the Lord as he, he puts a covering on you. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Romans thirteen and verse fourteen. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make per, make, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So, and then um, we'll uh, go here also to, um, to Galatians, uh, Galatians 3. We'll look over here in Galatians 3, what the Lord says about that. And this one mentions baptism, but it's not talking about literal baptism going on the water. It's talking about spiritual baptism here. Three, we'll go to Galatians 3, and we'll look at verse... Uh, Start 26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it's by the faith of Jesus Christ, being uh, by being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So it's talking about baptisms, a spiritual baptism into Christ. You've put them on. And uh, so to clear this up, um, Paul clears it up up here. And if you look over in 1 Corinthians, you don't have to go there. I'll go there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and uh, I thought this was good. Uh, Dr. Ruckman, I was reading some of his stuff, and as I was going through there, he had pulled this out, and and uh, I looked over here, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. It, it clarifies what, what kind of baptism this is. Uh, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, so that's in the Christ's body, as said in the verse before, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So after we've put on these three, so we got the new man, we put on first, which is our salvation. The armor of God, the Lord gives us armor to be able to protect ourselves from the devil and other things, and um, and then put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we'll look at the last one here after we've done all this. At the end, the Lord, he's going to call us saints up together and we're going to put off, we're going to put on, put um, incorruption. So incorruption, put on incorruption. 
So we'll look over here. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 15. This is at the rapture, whenever he calls us out. Those who are saved. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. Did I say 1st? Or no? Yeah, 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. And look at, uh, start at 53. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption. So our body was corruptible before. So whenever we die, we, we've got to put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this in, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, "Death is swallowed up in in victory." O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, these be, st be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know what labor is not, for, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, and then we'll look over here also too at uh, first or Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians five. Corinthians five. <clears throat> second corinthians 5 and uh this is uh we'll be clothed with our with our house from heaven um for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of god and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven if so if so be that we being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, beaten, and burned, not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. So we have that, and um, the Lord, as we as we uh, put on this put on this incorruption, and uh, we're put on immortality, and uh, the Lord tells us there. Um, with that and um so we'll put on our eternal clothes at the end and uh so uh that's that's it so uh, hopefully with uh, all these you know with the new man the armor of god some things that maybe we should consider to to put on that the lord would have us to put on and uh the first the first two uh, i guess the first one would be i guess the most important put on the new man is uh salvation uh you want to make sure that you have eternal security you want to make sure that uh, before you leave this world, before you, um, if, if you don't know the Lord, you won't have that chance to put on an incorruption. Um, so make sure you have that, that, uh, that new man that's with you, you know, get saved. Um, it's easy. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's easy. Uh, it's nothing hard. Uh, people try to maybe complicate things. Uh, you know, the scripture says, behold, is the now the day of salvation. Uh, you know, don't put it off, you know, maybe if you were ever wavering or thinking about, you know, maybe I, I've heard about being saved and what it means to be saved, um, put on a new man. Like I said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So you get, you become a new creature, uh, putting away the, all those old things, put off the old man. And uh, if anyone would like to be saved, I'd like to give them an opportunity. Um, if you're unsure about it, um, Lord, maybe today could be your day of salvation. And uh, uh, you could follow me after this prayer. And uh, Lord, I just, Lord, I just um, come before you, Lord. I just pray, Lord, you forgive me, Lord, for my sins. Uh, Lord, just uh, wash me, Lord, cleanse me, Lord. Uh, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. And uh, Lord, take me to heaven when I die and give me the free gift of salvation, Lord. Uh, just come into me, Lord, and save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've done that, you've had the new man and the Lord has given you other things that you're able to attain with the new man. Uh, you have the Omar God. And the Lord Jesus Christ will be with you now. And uh, so one day when you get out of here and you get raptured, uh, you'll have that incorruption. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And amen.